What's good? Welcome to Ari Roars. This is Ari speaking. Thank you for watching this video. Today I'm going to be talking about something that's going to probably make some people itch. And I'm going to try to be a little gentle because I know this is something a lot of people have been wired to believe is very important and have been living their lives based upon. And that is hustle culture, grind culture, paper chasing, coin chasing, all that stuff. I want to really unpack this and help people to understand that this is just not the way to go. I want to help people to learn to let money work for them and not the other way around. So I know in this video I'm coming against the system of belief that applies to an entire culture and society and generation. So I'm going to try to take my time with it and just be really authentic and honest with you, but I hope that in return you would come with an open heart and a sensitivity to the words I'm speaking. We're gonna break these chains, y'all. Break these chains. Sorry, I got a little aggressive there. Anyways, if that sounds interesting to you, then just keep on watching. Haters imitators and conflators, men, they all the same. Hard to win the match when being players of a lawless game. Trying to shake the ground so they can't help except to call my name. So most people know what hustle and grind means, but I'm really gonna get into the implications of it, not defining it, but really talking about the different beliefs that fall under the belief system that we need to hustle, we need to grind. The first and most obvious is money motivation. You do it for the money. The main intention is the material gain. The main reason that you act and exert energy is in order to get things back, to get money back. The next prong to this concept is easy money. You're not just getting any type of money, right? You wanna get quick money. You wanna get money that you don't really have to do much or care much about in order to get it. It doesn't really matter what you're doing at all as long as it's giving you a lot of return for your time. And it's also not about how much money it's gonna make you in the long run. It's about how much money it's gonna make you right now. Next is that you would sacrifice any and everything for money. I'll sleep when I'm dead. If you ain't talking money, y'all don't wanna talk. We don't care about anybody or anything, even ourselves and our well being. Doesn't matter <laughs> as long as I can get money in return, right? And on top of that, we're gonna sacrifice our values too cheating, lying, finessing, stealing. It doesn't really matter. If it goes against my values, but it brings me money, I'll do it anyway. That's what hustle and that's what grind says. And before I move on in this video, I do wanna make the, the differentiation between this and like actually just saving money for a goal. Like let's say you have a financial goal, I wanna save this much money so that I can get this thing. But the thing that you wanna get is not just gonna be like a Birkin bag or like some like material thing that has no further building upon. For example, you might be wanting to buy a car so that you can work a specific job, so you're saving up for that. You might be wanting to buy a camera because you believe your calling is to be a photographer, so you're saving up for that. And then it also goes back to, okay, what are you doing in order to save up for that? Are you now picking up a DoorDash job when you don't even like to drive? Are you dog walking, but you hate dogs? Are you working 80 hour work weeks and you're like dead tired? Or are you pouring more into your job as a server so that you can get bigger tips? You're helping the restaurant out by taking a double every now and then because you know that your team needs it and it's also gonna help you as well. Like what exactly are you doing in order to move towards that goal? And is the goal materialistic in the end, or is it possibly a material thing that can help you with a greater purpose? So there is a difference there. I just want to make that very clear. And we're going to break down some of that stuff later in this video as well. But as I've already been getting into just a smidge, I want to talk about the harms of the mindset of the hustle and grind. The first and most obvious is you're in a rat race. You're literally chasing the wind. There's no achieving anything. We're looking for external prosperity and just staying the exact same inside. And I really want you to sit and think about this because it's like, okay, I have the belief that I'm lacking something. So I'm going to put things around me. That's what you're saying when you are in this hustle and grind culture. I feel like I'm lacking something. I feel, I feel like I'm lacking something in me. Inside of myself, that's what I feel. <laughs> I just want to like really nail this in. I feel something inside of myself. So I'm going to get things and put them around me. And hopefully that's going to make me inside of myself feel different. 
it's a rat race because you'll end up doing that for the rest of your life. Get something else, put that around me. Put something else around me. More and more and more and it's never enough because you haven't done the work to have that internal prosperity that you actually desire. You're under the impression that whatever you're feeling on the inside would feel better if you put something on top of you. If you hid behind all of these things, that maybe you wouldn't notice the pain anymore. Not how it works. We usually just end up wanting something else. You reach the million dollar goal and now you want $10 million. You reach the five sneakers goal and now you want 20 sneakers. You know what I mean? You just keep wanting more things. And then ultimately you are trading your life in for money. You know, you're, you're dedicating every day of your life to making money. That means here's my life, there's some money, let's trade. I don't want my life as much as I want money. So instead of living my life for life, I'm living my life for things that I won't have when I die. Sacrificing all the potential and power inside of you to just have more things around you. Yet there's pieces of you that are just dying off because they're not being used. Your unique identity, the thing that made you you, you sacrificed it for an umbrella pursuit that everyone else is chasing as well. They all just want the same money as you. Y'all could be living the same exact path. I'm doing exactly what this next person is doing because of the fact that you don't want to acknowledge your unique identity and what God put inside of you to pour out into the world. Instead, you're just pursuing the exact same thing everyone else is pursuing. And now you're all the exact same person in expression, not in creation, but in expression. You're the exact same person as everyone else. Your character. And think about the term character now, because we have two kind of definitions of what character is. Character is like your character traits, your morals, your values, what matters to you. But your character also is who you are, a TV character, a character in a book. Your character depleted. There's no character remaining because you've traded in your character for the thing that everyone else wants. You traded in your character for the cumulative character of culture today. And in the process of you accumulating all of this coin, right? You end up sacrificing and losing out on a purposeful life that feels fulfilling, an experience that actually pours back into you, not onto you. You lose out on that. And even beyond that, it's just plain selfish, if we're being quite honest. Because since everything you're doing is for personal gain, you're having to hide yourself, play a role, manipulate, and there's no authentic expression in what you're doing. So you think this is just your career life, you think this is just your financial pursuit, but that bleeds into the rest of your life. So now you've got this career that's inauthentic and you're breeding these relationships that are inauthentic. You're having connections with people based on how you met them through your job, but you should have never been there because that's not you. And now you're connected with people that you should have never been connected with. Now you're forming relationships based on a false identity. And chances are you meet people that way, they're the same way. So when your two false identities presented to each other, there is bound to be some type of betrayal between that, especially considering this rat race is competitive. We're always looking to the left and to the right, trying to see what they got, and now we want that. Now we're trying to take it from them. And we end up using people and manipulating people and cheating people and stealing from people and finessing people and pulling at people's heartstrings to get them to believe one thing so that you can take something from them. Ladies, y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't do it. I'm just saying I know some of y'all be doing that. No judgment, by the way. I'm not here to judge you or anybody. I really just want you to feel and experience this from a different perspective. It's harmful. You might think it's harmless because what? Just for now. This is only going to go on for a month. You know what I mean? They'll get over it. You don't know that. You haven't even gotten over it because you don't even know why you did it. And this video is why you did it. <laughs> This video is explaining why you did it, just so you know. You're a part of a culture and I'm not knocking you for being born when you were born. This is what we were all raised to believe and we kind of have to work our way out of coming into agreement with the things that are harmful to us. Because otherwise we're desensitized to the hearts of people and we end up becoming robots. Y'all been scared of AI, why y'all scared of AI? <laughs> you are AI. <laughs> Because if everyone starts to adopt these mindsets, I mean, luckily there's still some people who are either straddling the fence of trying to do both or are actually moving into purposeful living and purposeful pursuits. If everyone was on this hustle and grind culture, 
We as a society would be so isolated. We would have no personal relationships. We would all hate each other, seriously, <laughs> because we would have no personal connection to each other because we'd be hiding our hearts. Our hearts are the ways that we connect. And when we're hiding them, we're burying them, we're depleting them, there's no way to connect with other people, genuinely. Whew. All right, well, we did that, didn't we? <laughs> that was the tough part. That was the conviction of it. I really want to bring us to a place of resolution and how we can work through this to begin to come out of the mindset of the hustle and grind culture. And it all starts with a change of perspective. The first thing that you need to know is that if all you have is money, you have nothing. I just want to be so clear about this. Just imagining your head, right? Instead of anything, the clothes on your back, the clothes in your closet, your friends, your family, your home, your food, your water, instead of all of that, you just had money. And that's just, that's how it had to be. You have nothing. With a bunch of pieces of paper, you're going to stitch. You can't even stitch them together because you ain't got no needles. <laughs> you can't make clothes. You can't do anything but bury yourself in it because money is nothing. All money is, is a resource that we can use in order to get other things. And those other things, you don't need money to get them. Can you have food without money? Yes. Can you have a home without money? Yes. Can you have clothes without having money? Yes. There are ways to have any and everything in life without having money. I would know because I've been there. I'm low-key still here now. <laughs> Money is a tool, like I said, it's a tool. And with that tool, you should be applying it towards building in your purpose. Now it's okay to have material desires. It's okay to want things. We all want things, okay? I'm just saying, don't let that be your main motivation for why you do things. Let that be the icing on the cake. When you're pushing towards your purpose and all of this surplus comes in because you know, you're know you using your finances, you're using your money, to push you towards your purpose, making sure that you have a good life, that you have a roof over your head, food on the table, clothes on your back, making sure that you have everything that you need, a car or whatever, making sure that you have all the equipment that you need for whatever your purpose is. And when you've invested your money into those things, usually because you're pushing towards your purpose, you have a little bit of fringe coin, you know what I'm saying? And that's the money that you can put towards the things you don't need, the things that you want, your material desires, perhaps, vacations, perhaps. The next thing, as I've mentioned multiple times in this video, is seek purpose. Do what's associated with your calling in life. And if you don't know your calling, I got a video on that, check it out. <laughs> because when you're doing something that's related to your calling, there's gonna be so much abundance around you when you really pour into that, when you really lock into that. There are gonna be things that you thought you needed money for that you don't. There are going to be things that you didn't think you would ever have enough money to get and now you do because you're doing what you're supposed to do you're doing what you're here on earth to do and you're not sacrificing the inner parts of you in order to do it when you are walking in your purpose and in your calling there is so much building that's happening on the inside of you a lot of us avoid taking this path because we feel that building when we're trying to move towards it and it's intimidating and we get scared and we'd rather do the easy thing we'd rather get the easy money because it's the simpler, easier path, but it's not the fulfilling path. It's not the path that gives us joy. Being purpose-driven and selfless is actually what gives you the sense of self that you need, what gives you confidence, what gives you fulfillment, what gives you inner abundance, and then turns into outer abundance. It's the only way that pursuing something can get you both. Like if you pursue finances, pursue money, you're going to have money in the end, but you're going to be lacking on the inside, actually deprived on the inside. If you pursue your purpose and your calling, you're going to be abundant on the inside and then it's going to bring you even more abundance on the outside than you would have if you took the other route. Take one route, you deprive yourself on the inside and gain on the outside. Take the other route, you're abundant both on the inside and the out. And going off of that, I do want to say when you're taking that purposeful route, you need to be patient because there may in fact be a period of time where you don't have the material gain, the material, you know, the finances that you really want to have. And that specifically is the main part that scares most of us off. But you've heard so many testimonies of the most rich or successful people in the world having been dirt poor, homeless, alone, helpless, living in a car, whatever. 
you've seen the testimonies, you've heard the stories, and it happens for a reason because it gives you a sense of character. There's a humility that comes with that. You know, someone who's like, yeah, I never had to struggle. I just got it and then here I am. There's no empathy in that. There's no being able to relate to other people. There's no being able to encourage other people who are in the same situation and going on the same path. When you go through tough times while you're pushing towards purpose, that gives your story a little bit more of a richness to it so that it actually inspires other people to push forward for wherever they are. So again, it's a selfless route. And it's not only selfless, but it's also fulfilling you because you now have the humility and the character that's going to help sustain you and push you forward. You're never going to have the fear of going broke because you've been broke and you know that you were fine and you know that you had everything that you needed on the inside when you were there. Easy come, easy go. Pressure makes diamonds. A seed is buried underground before it takes root. And the deeper the roots, the taller the tree. You know, when you're underground, you can't see. I mean, most of us never been underground, probably won't until we're dead. But just imagine it, right? If you're underground, you can't see. It just requires faith in knowing that one day I'm going to come up above ground. I'm going to sprout and I'm going to bear fruit. And that fruit is going to produce more seeds that I can plant and that I can offer to other people that they can plant. And there's going to be an abundance of seeds and trees and fruits growing all around the world because I was patient enough and had the faith enough to wait for my seed to sprout. The reward in life is doing what you love and your desires are going to come along with it as long as you're patient. So that's it. That's all I got for you. I thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, then like it and I'll see you next time. Bye.